I want to encourage you to grab your Bibles this, today, and we're going to look at Luke chapter 15. We have a passage of scripture here that is so common to us as believers, and yet there's something in it for this year in which we live. For you that may or may not know, we are living in the year of Jubilee. In the Hebrew calendar, it is 5776, and historically they believe that it is the year of Jubilee, which only comes around every 50 years. So in the year of Jubilee, there's many significant things that God does. And one of the significant things that he does during the year, year of Jubilee is that he restores things to people. And as I was reading in Luke chapter 15 and thinking about the power and presence of God and how relevant it is for our day and our hour, the Lord began to show me the fivefold restoration that he wants to do during the year of Jubilee using the story of the prodigal son. And so I want to encourage you, if you have your Bibles open to Luke chapter 15, we're going to jump right in the middle of the story of the prodigal son. We know what he did, that he wasted all of his money um, that he had been given as an inheritance from his father uh, on wild living. And, they, and the Bible says that he was in lack, that he was hungry, that he was naked, and that in that state of mind, he came to his senses and he turned and came back to his father. And we're going to pick it up right there out of verse 20, Luke chapter 15. It says, so he got up and came to his own father. But while he was still a long way off, his, his father saw him and was moved with pity and tenderness for him. And he ran and embraced him and kissed him. That is the first thing that I believe God is going to restore in the fivefold restoration during this year of Jubilee. He is going to restore relationships. And specifically, I believe he's going to restore, according to Malachi chapter 4, the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the hearts of the children back to the fathers. Jesus came to an orphaned planet. When it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, he sent Jesus into a planet of orphans. We that have been left without a father, we that have not been protected, we that have not been provided for, we that have not known um, who we are, but he restores our relationships. The very first thing that I believe God is going to restore during this Jubilee, and many of you are seeing it, and many of you will continue to see it, is that God is about to restore relationships. The first thing that happens in the story of the prodigal son is that when he returns to the father, there is the restoration of relationships. And as believers, we know that in 2 Corinthians, we are called to be ambassadors of reconciliation. We are called to reconcile relationships, reconcile sons and daughters back to the father in heaven. And so the very first thing, if you're wondering where you're at in the kingdom of God and on his calendar and what is he doing with you, the very first thing that God is doing in this year of Jubilee is that he is in the process of restoring relationships. Verse 21 goes on to give us our second clue as to what God is restoring. It says, And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and earth in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his bondservants, verse 22, here it is, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him. You've heard the story of the robe that is placed upon his son, but did you know what the robe signifies? In Luke chapter 15, that father was not just any father, that father was a king. He was a rich father. He had servants. And as we read the story, you'll see he had a lot of other stuff as well. But this king that represents the father in heaven is a royal king. And so when he came and put the robe upon his son, he was not only restoring the relationship by running to him and kissing him. He put the robe on him as a restoration of his identity as a son of that family, as a royal priesthood. First uh, Peter 2, 9 says a holy nation of people belonging to God. The robe represents your identity. God is restoring the identity of the sons and daughters. If you don't know who you are, you are never going to accomplish what, what God has planned. Because identity always precedes the other things that are coming after it, which we will see that God is about to restore. 
But I am here to tell you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, that God is in the process, number one, of restoring the relationship between him and the prodigals. And if you've already returned and that relationship is restored, I want you to know the next order of business on the Father's agenda is to restore identity. He wants you to know who you are in him. He wants you to know your identity and your highest calling. The greatest title that you will ever be given is that of son or daughter. You are called a son or a daughter of the Most High God. There is no higher title. That's why this is the fivefold restoration. The first thing he's restoring is relationship. The second thing that he is restoring is identity. And as we go on in verse 22, it says, um, put a robe on him and give him a ring for his hand. The third thing that God is restoring in this year of Jubilee, my God, today somebody's going to get excited. The third thing he's restoring today is he's putting a ring on your finger. Not a, just any old ring. He's actually putting a signet ring. The ring represents your authority. If you read the book of Esther chapter 3, Haman asked for the king's ring of authority so that he could make a decree that could not be changed. God is restoring the ring of authority upon his people. He first has to restore the relationship. He second has to restore your identity. Because if you don't have a relationship, you don't know who you are. If you don't know who you are, you don't have authority. The church is lacking authority to cast out demons, heal the sick, and raise the dead. Not because we haven't been commanded to do so according to Mark chapter 16. But because we don't know our identity and therefore we're lacking in authority. Come on, somebody. It is the fivefold restoration year and God is on the move in a powerful way. He's going to restore your relationship with him. Then he's going to restore your identity in him. And then he's going to restore the authority that is given through him. You were called to cast out demons. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 28 verse 18, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me and I give it to you. Go into all the world. So the authority that was given to Jesus, that was laid upon his shoulders, the ring that was placed upon his finger, he said, I'm restoring that ring to you. That ring of authority is being given back to the children, to the sons and daughters in this year of Jubilee. It is time for the fivefold restoration. Some of you, you've had your relationship restored. Some of you, you've had your identity restored. And I want you to know that you are right on track because if you know who you are, your authority is soon to follow. Because he is a God that looses authority. That's why we've been in the season of, of knowing our relationship and knowing our identity. That's why you felt in the spirit realm that God is helping you know who you are. He's been working on your identity because he wants to loose the authority of God. And I'm telling you today, I'm telling you today that God is about to loose his authority through his people again. We are about to see demons cast out with a word. With a word, you're not going to need to shake, bake, and quake. You're just going to speak the word and the demons are going to go. I'm telling you, with a word, we're going to see limbs grow out. People that have club feet, people that have cancer, we're going to see diseases cast out of people with a word. Because every sickness, every disease, according to the book of Acts chapter 1, says that it is a spirit of infirmity. And that Jesus cast out the spirit of infirmity. And that spirit must go from our people. Because 78% of Americans are on some form of prescription drug. And it is high time that we break the spirit of infirmity off of the church of Jesus Christ. And we begin to decree and declare that we are healed, healthy, and whole in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I know you shouting right now. Praise the Lord. So he's restored your relationships. <laughs> he's restored your identity. Did you know fathers give identity? That's why he has to restore your relationship to your father. Because your identity comes from your father in heaven and from your father on earth. And then the third thing he's restoring is your authority. Then look at this. Verse 22 is a power packed verse. Then it says, and he put sandals on his feet. Did you know that the sandals or the shoes, depending on your translation, that is your destiny. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. The Bible says that how pleasant are the feet of those who bring good news. Your feet 
represent your destiny. We are called not to walk in the counsel of the wicked. We are called to walk on the path that God has laid before us. It is our destiny. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, to give you a future and a hope. Your feet represent your destiny. Your feet are the ones that tread upon the lion and the cobra. Your feet are the ones that crush the head of the enemy. Your destiny is in your feet. The Lord says that every place your foot shall trod, that shall be the ground I give to you. I'm telling you today, when you have a restored relationship with your father, he will bestow upon you an identity as a son or daughter of God. He will release to you your authority, and then you will begin to walk into your destiny. My God, today it is the fivefold restoration of God that he is doing through the people of God in this year of Jubilee. It is a great time to be alive. I don't know about you, but I'm telling you, I have waited 40 plus years to see my identity, to understand my relationship with my father, to experience the authority that God has given me. And I am beginning to walk into my destiny. I am beginning to step foot. I don't have to kick open a door. I don't have to force anybody to let me in. I don't have to wait for man to lift me up. I just got to know who I am. Let the authority of God rule in my life and watch the destiny that God has for me open before me. And the same is true for you. One thing that I have noticed is that people that don't know who they are, they try to kick in doors of destiny for themselves. They quote the verse that um, you will make your own way prosperous. I am here to tell you today by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ that if you make your own way prosperous, you're going to have to maintain the way that you made. But if God makes your way prosperous, if God opens the door for you, if God kicks in that gate of deliverance for you to enter into that city and bring redemption, I promise you by the voice of God that he will give you everything you need to make it happen that he will establish you that he will hold you that he will he will decree and declare over that place that you are the voice of authority in that realm in that sphere in that atmosphere I'm telling you today if you don't make it happen on your own God will make it happen for you you just stay in the agenda of God if you are in the identity stage don't force the authority because with if you go in and try to have authority before you have identity the demons are gonna look at you and say um Jesus we know and Paul, we know, but who are you? You must know your identity before you can release your authority. And if you don't have any authority, guess what? You may build a big church. You may have a large ministry. You may have TV ministry, radio ministry, name it and claim it ministry. But I will tell you today, right now, that you will not be able to establish a change that is lasting and leave a legacy because you will not have any authority and people will know it. The, the, when Jesus came on the scene, um, he began to teach and the Bible says that the people were amazed by his teaching. Because he didn't teach as the scribes and the Pharisees. He actually spoke as one that had authority. We have been living in a generation with preachers that have no authority. And therefore, people don't have any frame of reference. But I'm telling you, people that have an identity are going to release an authority. And they're going to walk into their destiny. And when they do, the Pharisees are going to be exposed for who they really are. So you just get ready. Wait for God to do it for you. He knows the timing. He's not... Uh, demoting you. He's actually promoting you by protecting you from sending you out into the lion's den before he's ready to shut the lion's mouth. Come on, somebody. Anyway, I'm excited about that. That's the fourfold. The restoration of relationship, the restoration of identity, the restoration of um, authority, and the restoration of destiny. Here's the final thing that he gives. He goes on to say, <laughs> verse 23, and bring out that wheat fattened calf and kill it, lest we let us revel and feast and be happy and make merry. Ladies and gentlemen, the final thing that God is going to restore once he's restored your relationship, once he's restored your identity, once he's restored your authority, once he's restored your destiny, he's going to restore unlimited resources because you're going to need them 
to do what he has called you to do. But your identity will be so secure that you won't need to buy a fancy car so people think you're amazing. You will already know that you are a son or daughter of God, so you know you're amazing. You don't need a car to make you look amazing. Who you are in Christ is amazing, and you're not looking for man to lift you up because God lifted you up. And therefore, you are not looking for the man's applause because you've got the applause of God. You're not looking to compete with other people. You're actually looking to compliment other people because you recognize that as a kingdom person, unlimited resources are at your disposal, not for you to get fat and happy, but for you to rejoice and to celebrate and to pour out resources into every avenue and venue that God releases for you. God has called you to be an apostolic resource center. He's called you to be a distributor of the wealth of God. He's called you to not copyright the words of God, but to share them freely because you are a voice. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that there are very few voices, but there's a lot of echoes. There's people that are going to take this message and they're going to echo it. And I say praise the Lord because I know that I have unlimited resources. I have access to the bread of heaven. I have access to a distribution center in heaven that is without lack. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He will create a new sermon for me to preach once this one goes out. And I decree and declare to you that whether you're an echo or you're a voice, I want you to know that if you're in the process of the fivefold restoration, God is on the move and he is going to do immeasurably more than you could ask or imagine. It is time for the church to arise. It is time for kingdom people. They're going to start coming out of their caves. They're going to start coming out of their training camps. They're going to start coming out of the places where God has had them hidden for the sake of training, establishing identity. And when you come out, as a son or daughter of God, you are going to see authority flow through your hands. You are going to hear authority come out of your mouth. And you are going to experience the wonder of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords as he opens doors of destiny to you that you never knew you could walk through. And all those years of tithing where you sowed but you haven't seen what you were supposed to reap. With all those promises of God that you look in scripture and you say, I'm doing what God told me to do, but I'm not seeing what he said would be the reward. I want you to know that according to Hebrews chapter 13 verse 6, that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him and that he, Jesus the man, Christ the anointed, he is your great reward. He is your treasure. He is the reward of those that know their identity. He's it. Once you've seen him, oh my God, today the glitter of the gold goes away because you have seen the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and it changes everything. I just want you to know that I'm so honored to share this fivefold restoration with you today. I believe that God is in the process of doing it in this year of Jubilee. So take heart, don't give up and know that the best is yet to come.